well, well, well. Welcome back, everybody, to the Dark Forest. It is I, around this creepy, spooky-looking campfire that you see in front of you on your screen. I have some incredibly spooky tales to share with you. I hope you're ready to get those buns toasted. A special shout-out to Mistress of Creepy Pasta. Anyways... Scoot that lawn chair a little bit closer to the fires to toast up those beautiful buns of yours. And let's get spooky. I don't remember much of my childhood, although I do remember moving around a lot. We usually moved through neighborhoods every couple of years due to my father's job. But there was this one house I remember distinctly. I was around the age of 11 when we had moved into this duplex on a quiet street. The first night at the new house wasn't all that comfy. Our furniture and bed frames were yet to be delivered. I remember driving in the back garage the first day. The yard was filled with soil that was intertwined in trash. The weeds grew along this one old tree. The skinny branches stretched out to the house, and the porch that we would soon walk on was worn down and the paint chipped away. The house itself inside wasn't all that bad. It was small, but since it was only my parents and my brother alongside me, it was great for us. As I walked around the house, the floorboards creaked. I glanced through the empty house. As I came across the end of the living room, I noticed a long flight of stairs which led up to the upstairs, I assumed. I stood at the bottom, staring up at the weak light bulb towards the top. Later that night, I came to find out my room would be on the first floor at the top of the stairway. My parents had set up my mattress on the ground with a blanket and some pillows. My four-year-old brother also shared the room with me. His things had not yet arrived. I remember getting ready for bed that night. My parents were settling in down the hall, and my brother was on the ground playing with toys. After some time, my mother had came into the room and tucked us in. She kissed us both on the head and told us to go to bed. My brother had been laying on the top of the mattress closest to the door, and I had been laying down towards his feet nearest to the wall. It didn't take long for me to fall asleep, but it didn't last long. Throughout the night, I kept falling in and out of my sleep, each time sitting up with blurred vision only to fall back into my pillow within the next few seconds. Throughout each time, my brother had remained asleep. I remember waking up once more. I had sat up in my bed. One arm supported me while the other hand rubbed my eye. My vision was once again blurred. I looked over to the doorway and immediately froze. A cold shiver shifted throughout my whole body. As my vision cleared, the outline of a man appeared in the doorway. I rubbed my eyes once more, just to be sure I wasn't imagining this. But as I looked over again, nothing had changed. It was a man. His hands were in his pockets. He seemed almost casual, but as my eyes traveled upwards his long body, I soon became frightened at the sight of his face. The figure had been wearing some sort of cotton bag over his head. There were dark holes in place of his eyes. He was wearing a long grin, which had been sewn into the mask. As the blood dripped down his smile, I realized he had not been looking at me, but was staring at my sleeping brother. As all this was happening, my body remained still. I tried to scream and yell for my parents, but no sound came out. I considered running, 
but it was standing in the doorway. It felt like hours before I finally moved. Soon, I turned over to face the wall slowly. I stared at the blank wall as my body was shaking all over, tears drizzling to the side of my face that met my ear. Somehow, I managed to fall asleep that night. And when I woke up, everything seemed normal. I was startled and kept my distance from my room. My parents soon realized something had been wrong. I told them what I had seen the night previous. They were concerned, as any parent would be hearing this from their child. I remember fearing that room. It had been weeks since I finally slept in it again. To this day, I still can't explain what had happened all those years ago. A part of me used to believe I had dreamt it. Until about a year ago. I had been going through some old photos. There were some from the duplex where this had happened. One of the photos was of me. I had been in my mom's room. I was smiling and it seemed like a normal photo at first glance. But I remember a friend pointing something out. In the back of the photo... My old room above the stairs was seen down the hall. And in the doorway was a black figure of a man. It was monsoon season in Tucson, Arizona in 1975. I was a junior in high school. A friend of mine and I had just left a school event at around 9 p.m. It was raining pretty hard as we drove home in his Jeep. On our way, we both really had to go to the bathroom, so we decided to stop at a local park to use the facilities. On our way from the middle of the park back to the parking lot, we both heard what sounded like a deep, guttural cat cry the way they do sometimes that sounds scary thinking nothing of it we continued we soon heard it again this time it was closer it came again and this time it sounded more like a woman's scream. We looked at each other and started to run to his jeep. As we ran, the cries came again and this time they sounded like they were coming not far from behind us. We made it to his jeep and we hopped in. Drive! I yelled. What was that? He asked. I told him of the legend of La Llorona, and I believed that that's what we had heard. He became an instant believer. On our drive, I kept looking into the back seat hoping she would not join us. The stories of this ghost were no strangers to me. I grew up with them. This only verified her existence to me. It wasn't until many years later when several family members and I had another encounter with her in which my elderly aunt and I actually saw her. But that's another story. Hello, Zach, and everyone listening. This story happened to me when I was a teenager in upstate Utah. I lived in a smaller town called Logan, which is near the border of Idaho. Logan is known for its beautiful art district and the surrounding national forests. There's about 51,000 people here, so it's not a small town, but it's far from a major city too. We're somewhere off in the middle. Logan is primarily Mormon, so if you're not Mormon, 
it's probably in your best interest to make some Mormon friends, in all honesty. But you know what? No one really judges anybody here. It is what it is. This happened during summer of that year. Like I said, it was a few years back. My friends and I were over hiking over at the Wind Caves trailhead. From the starting part, it's roughly around two miles of a hike up a dramatic viewpoint with arched rocks formations. There's like miniature caves that are in the hills with the pine trees with a beautiful landscape. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was my first time there, of course. That's why I'm so dramatic about it. I've been to other hiking areas, but this one was awesome because of the caves. Before this experience had occurred, I was a pretty avid hiker. Camper, you name it. Anything that had to do with the outdoors. But when we went over to the Wind Caves trailhead, what we experienced that evening changed my life forever. I want to say the first 30 minutes was beautiful and normal like any hike usually would be. During our hike, we came across some rock art that we found out later was created by the members of the Fremont culture. Utah is based off of several different Native American tribes, including the Navajos. There are plenty of things that go bump in the night according to their native beliefs and myths. A lot of those things, people still believe in to this very day. I, for one, was a skeptic. I didn't believe in spirits, ghosts, any cryptids, anything of that nature whatsoever. Heck, I didn't even like to watch horror movies. I wasn't a wimp, it just wasn't up my alley of choice of movies or films to watch. I was more into action films and good comedies. Like I said, that was until we went on that hike that evening. It was so gorgeous that day. We started our hike pretty late as we had ate lunch first but we had already pre-planned this hike even before that day, so we were already set up to go once we had finished our lunch. I love the desert, but I also like the forest and the trees too. I'm pretty open-minded, so the area is just perfect because you get a little bit of everything up here. On our way up, this trail was absolutely stunning and normal as it could have been. We enjoyed some of the caves that we had come across. Once we reached the top, we enjoyed ourselves for a good 20 minutes just taking selfies and things of that nature before we started to make our way back down towards the car. But on our way down, that's when things started to get funky. I mean, really funky. Like we started hearing things in the woods off in the distance. Somewhere off in the wood line of the pine trees. I could still remember how it sounded. Whatever... It was. My friends and I just stopped on our tracks in the middle of the dirt trail, stunned and confused. Frightened as all hell. What's going on? I remember asking them. Nobody spoke. We were just completely terrified. I don't know how long we just stood there in the dirt completely out in the open, invisible to anything that would have been in the area. We didn't care. We knew there was something out there, and we didn't know what it was, nor did we know what direction that noise was coming from. Eventually, I know we continued our path down the trail back to the car. I mean, we couldn't stay up there forever, right? We were almost at the car when I... I heard some sounds behind me. I mean, we heard. 
It was the sounds of twigs or branches snapping somewhere off behind us on the trail up the hill. Do I dare look back? I remember asking myself in my head. And of course I did. When I turned around, that's when I saw this wolf-like creature just standing there behind some large tree. But it was huddled behind the bark, like it was trying to camouflage or hide itself from us. It was on its upright hind legs, gripping around the torso of this tree, peeking its head out on the side, like it was curious. It looked like a wolf, but its posture was that of a man. I remember getting freaked the hell out and I told my friends to book it and we ran all the way back to our car. My friends never turned back to look at it, but I did. I know what I saw. And judging everything based off of the mythology of the area and all, I believe I encountered a skinwalker. Well, everyone, I hope that you all enjoyed the three true spooky ghost and cryptid tales tonight. We had finally reached that 10,000 mark. Today, in fact, I'm ahead of schedule, so this is going back to the previous week when I'm actually recording this. But if you're hearing it now, uh, yeah, it's like mid-July. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends. And spread me like butter.